I had no idea that smoke detectors needed to be replaced every six to ten years until this weekend recently every smoke detector in our house started going off and I couldn't pull the batteries out fast enough to find out where the problem was when they had no batteries and I realized that I had a bigger problem and that it was due to uh, defective smoke alarms that had just gone past their life. Here are the tools you're going to need. First thing you're going to need is a step ladder. You're going to need a drill. It can be this kind of a power drill or it can be just a screwdriver because there's two screws you're going to have to remove or loosen and you're going to need some kind of a power tester to make sure that you're not working with live electricity. And then with a single half turn twist you'll be able to pull off your old smoke detector revealing three wires and they might be black white and yellow they might be black white and red the key is that your black and white are your ground and your power the yellow sorry the yellow is the one that connects all of your smoke detectors so that when one sounds they all sound throughout the house and uh, that's just a safety precaution to have them all sounding. If you don't connect the yellow, then only the smoke detector that senses the smoke is going to go off and the others will remain silent. One other thing you're going to need is a voltage tester like this one. And I'm going to put it into the on position. So now it's in the on position. Some of them have a flashlight function so that you know when they're actually working. Uh, this one doesn't, so I need to plug it into an outlet. That tells me that it's working. And now I'm going to go up the ladder and I'm going to verify that I have a live connection right there. So now I'm going to go to the circuit panel and find out where my uh, units run in the circuit panel and cut off the breaker. Yeah, so here I am in the garage looking at all the circuit breakers and um, my house was built 19 years ago and if I look at all of the different labels that have been put on by the various electricians over the years none of them say smoke detectors because it was one of the first things that was wired in. So you're going to have to go through each one individually and find out which they're on. But here's a clue. One of your circuit breakers might have this type of a test switch on it. And this is called an AFCI. And it is most likely that if you have one of these, this is where your smoke detectors are. So it's just a matter of flipping the switch, uh, turning that off, and going upstairs and retesting to see if there's um, power to your smoke detector. Okay, so I flipped off the circuit breaker and now when I test this, I get no buzzing. So now I know that it's um, free of any um, voltage and I can start working on it. So this is the unit that I've chosen uh, to replace my smoke detectors with. It's the Kitty or the old Fire X, and that's the model number, and it comes with your little pigtail connector, your smoke detector, and you keep this little bag on um, if you're doing some drywalling or if there's any dust present, otherwise you can take it off and throw it away. And your new base plate. Chances are your old base plate will have to be replaced. And that's the first thing that I'm going to do, and that's what you need the screwdriver for. This unit comes with a 9 volt battery, but as you can see, it's certainly not a lithium battery. Uh, it's not going to last very long. It probably won't last a year, um, but it's there. And to activate it, you pull out that tab after you're finished, or now if you want, or when you're finished the installation. It also has a um, indicator here to tell you what your install date is and to remind you to replace it by a certain date. Now, a fun fact about your smoke detector. Uh, I bet you didn't know, or maybe you did know, that it contains a small amount of radioactivity. But it's so small that you shouldn't have to worry, you don't have to worry about handling it with your hands. Um, 
It's americium-241. It has a half-life of 432 years. It was first identified uh, in the Manhattan Project. It's a byproduct of plutonium. It costs about $1,500 per gram, and there's enough in one gram to make three million smoke detectors. So what you have is a very, very small amount of this isotope that you shouldn't have to worry about. Um, but you do want to dispose of this properly. And I'm going to take mine to the waste hazard facility nearby. Step number one is just to disconnect these wires by removing the caps and then pulling the wires apart. Just to loosen these two screws. And it's just a matter of taking this one off, putting this one on with the existing screws. I'm going to stop this filming here and use two hands to do that. So you can see that in spite of having four separate holes, one of the screws lines up nicely, but the other one doesn't. But the unit's light enough that it can be held up with one screw. Now you notice I left a yellow one hanging before I reconnected the black and the white to the little cable that's provided with the unit. The reason I left the yellow hanging there is because the new ones don't have a yellow. They have a red. And the old yellow is connected to a white, but the electrician was smart enough to paint some red on it. Um, so I'm going to connect red to where the yellow used to be. And you also notice this little cap that's on it. I'm gonna to have to take that cap off, but the reason that that one has a cap and the white and the black don't is because it's not essential to connect the red one. You only connect the red one if you want all the smoke, elector, smoke detectors in the house to alarm when one detects smoke. That's a safety feature and it's highly recommended. So after connecting each one of these, you do need to pull on the wires, make sure that they are well twisted by the cap. Okay, so the next thing you do is now you take those twisted cables and you push them up into the recess above the ceiling, and then you're gonna connect your tether to the back of your unit. You might even find it easier just to push all of the wires up into the box before you put on uh, the anchor plate. And then you just put it up against the ceiling, find its the grooves, twist it on, activate it by pulling out the battery uh, protector, and you're done. And then the last thing you need to do and your installation is complete, is flip back on the circuit breaker and go around the house and check that they all have a green power light. So now you have a box of detectors that you want to throw away. Check your local environmental regulations and see if you, how to dispose of them. But personally, I'm going to take them to the same place where I take old oil, recycled oil, or empty um, paint cans and uh, drop them off there with the toxic waste. There's some very useful instructions that come with it and I recommend you take a look at it. One of the things says that it's a five year limited warranty so you should think about replacing these um, between five and seven years is my recommendation and you'll also notice that it says not to use lithium batteries and I just made a point of saying it doesn't contain a lithium battery well you're not supposed to use lithium batteries as your replacement